Thanks. And so we're keeping pretty well on time. And so at this point, we will now transition to the last of our questions right before lunch. And this will be question four. And Carson Loomis will be framing the question on training, sharing, and collaboration. So um, I'm Carson Loomis. I'll be uh, framing question number four. And to start, I'll point out that uh, obviously there's been a lot of interest in the undiagnosed disease network, and uh, that interest has been both national and international. It's also uh, clinicians, physicians, uh, clinical geneticists, as well as researchers, all types of different researchers. And so this question is specifically looking at communication, communication with the UDN and both international and national uh, interactions. And it's been broken down into three sections. Uh, the first section is uh, training, then sharing, and then collaboration. And uh, in presenting uh, today, I'm going to frame this. And then um, Dr. Rachel Ramoni is going to present uh, on the UDN perspective. Uh, for our outside expert perspective, it'll be Dr. Uh, Ronald Kahn, who is uh, from the University of Toronto. And then the moderator and uh, summarizer will be Mariska Brown. And uh, specifically, uh, of those three areas, I wanted to point out a couple specific uh, points. One is that in training, uh, the, right now the NIH UDP, and I think uh, Rachel Ramoni will speak more about this, is doing specific types of training. But the question is, uh, is it the right type of training? And should that training be expanded or changed? And also, should the, uh, should the training be um, expanded to the rest of the network? For sharing of uh, the information and data, both the, um, the uh, sources, the resource sources, as well as the sharing of information and data with uh, different databases, such as dbGaP and uh, Phenome uh, Central. Should that uh, also be expanded beyond that? Is that uh, adequate? And for collaborations, uh, what role and level of support should uh, collaborations have? For clinical interactions, should this, uh, should this expand to non-network clinical sites? And that's in both directions, as well as uh, information going out, but should it also be uh, more of a collaboration uh, with other clinical sites in the information and effort that they can bring in? Expand the international uh, collaborations that have already begun. And for research, the research aspect, should we continue the gene function studies? Should those be expanded? Should, uh, should the different cores, model organisms, and the metabolomics be more uh, interactive with the program? And also, scientific collaborations with outside investigators, are there ways in which we should uh, expand and um, promote that type of uh, further interaction going forward in the future? And so I'll now turn it over to uh, Rachel, who will um, I'll bring you up on the UDN perspective. Rachel? Uh, 